even as a child, I loved nature. And uh, oh, my hero used to be Robin Hood, yeah, the bow and arrow. And uh, oh, my mother, my mother taught me a story when I was like nine years old about Amazon women. And they used to cut off one breast so they can shoot their bow and arrow better. And I thought, oh, I like to be like that. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I immigrated to New Zealand uh, to be with Peter, my husband. And we used to go walking in the weekend. I did not want to come back on Sunday afternoon to go back to work. And we said, why don't we try to live here and try to survive like Robin Hood in the forest? Well, I first went traveling when I was 19. And I went to Asia and particularly in India. And then I did many other things and eventually as an adult I became interested in education and I was interested at that time in environment and all kinds of things natural. So I did uh, studies which included many many different types of things from science to philosophy, sociology, economics and eventually went on to do a doctorate and then, of course, after doing all that, eight years of study, one thinks one needs to be working. So I had a job in a university. And after some time, I realized that all the things that I had learned about nature, it wasn't the same studying them and thinking about them and sitting in an office. I wanted to live the principles that I had learned from all the different cultures and people that I would studied. So I turned my back on the academic institution and for the last 17 years, I've been a nomad wandering the world, living spontaneously and trying to live the reality of all the things that I learned rather than studying them from a distance. We left our house, job, car and all our luxuries in 2010. So it's now almost eight years that we've been living. Seven years of those was in New Zealand. After seven years, we came to Europe. We started in France and we walked eastwards, a thousand kilometers, which took us three months. And then we took a bus to Bulgaria and we started walking again. And that's how we ended up here in Turkey, underneath um, Mount Olympus, um, when we walked in Bikia. So one of the things that I discovered from living in the wilderness is that fear does not help you. That it takes courage to live like this and do this, live this simple life. And it becomes obvious that people are becoming more and more afraid. And when you look at the history of humankind, you can see that actually what allowed us to survive in the first place was courage, not fear. A lot of people, they don't know how to make simple things like fires work. We have forgotten so much of what our ancestors learned so hard. It doesn't take much courage to live now. And so we are losing it and the fear is increasing. With the fear comes manipulation. If you have courage and you're very strong, you can't be manipulated by anybody. Life seems much simpler without of so many things that people find very important in this time. Well, we don't really have long-term plans because we try to live spontaneously. Uh, Miriam has been invited to be part of a writers' festival in Australia. And so there's an opportunity for us to go to Australia. And we'll go there and then we'll see what happens and we'll go and get help back or something. I don't know. I don't know where, how and when, but I like to find the bravest, strongest and wildest women on this planet for an expedition. I'm looking for five women and I want to go with these five women into the wilderness to survive almost entirely on hunting and fishing and gathering. Miriam, what kind of animals did you cut? Uh, with this? With this. Uh, possum, possum, gold, uh, hare, rabbit, small animals because we don't have a fridge. So Hindi. we... Uh... Hindi. Ah, turkey! Yeah, yeah. Wild mm. turkey. Hindi. Yeah. How many Duck. animals did you keep? Oh, many. <laughs> Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 